In today's JavaScript question, we're going to talk about prototypes. Almost every JavaScript object has an internal property, which is a reference to another object. That object is referred to as the prototype. Let's spend a few minutes examining the prototype in order to understand it better. First, I want to cover some concepts about the prototype, and then we will look at some examples. So first off, as mentioned, almost every object is linked to another object. That linked object is called the prototype. Now the reason we say almost is because the default object in JavaScript does not have a prototype. And it is possible to create an object with a null prototype, meaning it is not linked to another object. Now, objects inherit properties and methods from its prototype ancestry. Now, the word inherit here means that that object has access to those properties and methods. It can use them. They don't belong on the object. They are, they are not a part of the object. They are part of the object's prototype, but the object has access to them. And the reason we use the term prototype ancestry is because an object has a prototype, but that prototype object can also have a prototype and so on, up what we call the prototype chain. So the object can use any properties and methods that are on that prototype chain that belong to any of the objects that are a part of that prototype chain. So that's why we use prototype ancestry. Now a prototype is automatically assigned to any object when it's created. Now remember, other than the primitive types in JavaScript, everything is an object. So we're talking about arrays, we're talking about functions, we are of course talking about JavaScript objects. And finally, you can define an object's prototype. That's where the power prototype comes in, is when you're able to define what that prototype is. Our next tutorial will cover methods that can be used to define an object's prototype. All right, let, let's take a look at a diagram that can help illustrate the prototype. So here on the left side, we have an object. Its identifier is user1. It has some properties username and the value is John, age 32, address, city. Full address is a function and there's code inside of that function. There is a default property assigned to this object and that default property is referred to using both of these terms. That is basically a link to another object. And so if we follow the link, we have another object that can have properties and methods assigned to it as well. It can have a link to another object, a prototype as well. So that this is the prototype chain. And you can continue up the prototype chain until you get to the topmost object. Now, if in our code we were to refer to user1, dot state, what would happen is the JavaScript engine would first look on this object, the object we've defined. It would look for a property of state. If it can't find it, it would then follow the prototype link to the next object that is linked and look for a property of state there. If it finds it there, it returns it. If it doesn't find it, it continues up the prototype chain. If it gets to the uppermost object in the prototype chain and is not able to find the property that is referred to, then it returns undefined. Okay, let me open up the console and let's take a look at some examples that I think will help cement these concepts. So first off, I'm going to create a simple object using object literal notation. Now I have my object. 
There's nothing in it. I didn't put any properties or methods as a part of that object. However, I can do this. I can access a toString method of the object. And when I press return, it displays information to the console. So why am I able to access that method when I did not create it? Well, it's because it's a part of the object's prototype, the default prototype that's assigned when the object is created. So let's take a look at that object so we can see that. Here is the object. If I open it up, there's nothing inside the object. However, there is a link to the prototype as we can see here. If I open up that, we can then see there's a number of methods that are associated with the default object that is assigned as the prototype. One of those is toString. That is why I'm able to enter obj.toString because it exists on the prototype and that's where it accesses it. So when I entered that, JavaScript went up the prototype chain until it found a method toString and then it invoked it. All right, now what happens if I define on obj my own toString method? I'm just going to have it logged to the console object, and that's all. Press return. I've now defined a function on the obj object. Now if I enter obj.toString, you've probably guessed, it will find the one that is on the object and execute that. So it, it doesn't execute the one that is on the prototype. Now if we look at obj one more time, open it up. Now we have something in our object but we still have a link to the prototype object. However, when toString is entered, it finds this one first, and so it executes that function. All right, one more example. Let's create an array. Now, as mentioned, anything but primitive data types are objects in JavaScript. So an array is an object. Now, how are we able to do this? We can do the index of on an array and find the location of that in the array. But why is the index of method available? Well, it's because it's a part of the array prototype. So let me open that up. Here's our array. If I open that up, we can see the values and we have a link to the prototype right here. If I open that up, we can see that there's a number of methods and properties that are associated with it. One of those is index of. And so that's how we're able to execute index of. Now notice as we continue, the prototype of the array also has a prototype. Inside that, we see a toString method. Well, let's try something. If I do array.toString, well, that's different than the toString method for the object we created. Why is it different? Well, once again, looking at the array, the prototype of the array, if you'll notice, has a toString method as well. Yes, there is a toString method on the prototype of the prototype, but it's executing this toString method, which is created specifically for arrays and therefore it functions differently than the toString method that is used for a JavaScript object. 
So that's prototypes. In our next tutorial, we will look at way to assign a prototype to an object. There's a few ways to do that within JavaScript and we'll take a look at those. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like the video. You can click the link in the middle of the screen to access other tutorials from our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the circle link on the left. We have new videos each week. And to visit our website, allthingsjavascript.com, you can click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.